Hey sportsman, John Bergsman here with the Fisherman's Digest Hot Bites Report. We got five great reports to you today. Stay tuned. Hey, first report of the day. It has been idiotic fishing. Captain Nick Dode from Real Live Action Charters tells me out of the port of Monroe, Michigan. Listen, if you haven't been to Monroe, if you haven't fished out from the Sterling State Park down to the Ohio line, get out there right now. 20 to 25 feet of water, basically putting almost anything you want down. Nick's been hauling around bottom bouncers and spinners. He's been pulling flicker shads, flicker minnows, and also bandits. Everything within about mid-depth down to the bottom has been very productive. There's just a ton of fish. Remember guys, the Detroit River bite was on in April and for the most part there wasn't a lot of boats on the Detroit River because of the COVID. So we had an opportunity to get those fish out there and back into the lake untouched and now the western basin is chuck full of hundreds of thousands of fish that otherwise would have got caught. Get down to Monroe, get out there with your boat, 20 to 28 feet of water, Pretty much like I said, any bait you want to drag around, you're going to catch fish. You know, if you're an angler, you need space for all your stuff. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. Let me show you how the Polar Craft Kodiak gives you enough room to put everything you need for a great day of fishing. A huge rod locker to hold a bunch of rods with battery storage underneath for your front trolling motor. Two sides of wing storage to put all your tackle boxes and all the stuff you need for fishing and an in-floor spot to put wet storage. Anchors, ropes, drift socks, and everything you have to have a good day on the water. Hey, visit your local Polar Craft dealer and check out the Kodiak and all the really cool features. You're gonna love what you see. So hey, our next report is from up in Marquette County. We're gonna go all the way up over the bridge. I was there personally, this is my report. We were over on Squaw Lake, which is a real small lake over on the southwest corner of Marquette County. And we fished Squaw and Witch, and we fished another couple small lakes there in that southwest corner. And let me tell you, guys, get it on your bucket list. Get it on your wish list. This is awesome bass fishing in these small Marquette County lakes. Now, how do we get them? Well, they're post spawn right now, but they're still set up in less than 10 feet of water. So we went weighted wacky Senkos. I used a Strike King Zero or Ocho, and my buddy Scott Cormier that I fished with was pitching a topwater, a KBD Splash or a Sexy Dog. And those two baits were lights out. And that sounds crazy because they're both opposite. You can catch fish right now on the bottom. You can catch good fish in the rock and sand shoals right on the edges where they tumble off into deep water with top waters in the morning and again in the evening. And in that midday, just throw a weighted Cinco around and you'll catch lots of good fish. But Marquette County bass fishing for the rest of the summer is gonna be on steroids. I've fished there many, many times. I've never gone there and not got a very nice show. So this is a really underutilized place to fish. So get out there, check it out, get on my website, check out the shows I've shot. The Dead River Storage Basin is another awesome fishery. If you're gonna head up to Big Bay, Lake Independence, another great fishery. But there is lots of awesome bass lakes there in the greater Marquette region. So check it out, they're easy to catch. Here's our RH1 adjustable rod holder. This is one of our most versatile rod holders for the money. All machined aluminum knuckles right here. There is a hub in the middle of this. So one of the most important things that everybody kind of struggles with on here is getting this rod holder to adjust. But it has a lot of positions and it's very easy to work with once you grasp it. So you actually have to pull out at the very bottom of this rod holder to get the adjustability out of it. And if you pull out to the side nice and easy, you will get all the adjustment you want. It works just perfect. And that adjust up and down that way it will come all the way back inside the boat so if you had to have a rod holder to worry about putting a cover on it really helps in that aspect and we have all of our teeth machined in the bottom so we can rotate this around 360 degrees I can fish off the back of the boat on here and run a bottom bouncer if I wanted to I can fish it straight off the side of this boat and I could run a dipsy diver out of here that's how strong this setup is so very very versatile for the money on it and the strength um, the RH1 rod holder Check us out, traxtech.com. 
So Manistee, Michigan, you know, the whole western shore of Michigan has just been on fire with lake trout all spring. Now, we're also tumbling in some mix bag. You know, every single trip Captain Alex from the fire plug tells us that he's catching or getting hookups with kings and coho and steelhead. Now, every day is a little different, but the one reliable factor is from 140 to 200. He's into the lake trout heavily and they're going to be the base catch of the day. Now, you're always fishing other stuff in all the different segments to make sure you're trying to get into those silver fish, but no worries if you don't bump into them from day to day because Captain Alex is locked into the nice Lakers. Now, what's he using if you're going with your own boat and you want to just go to Manistee and fish yourself? Well, it's the time of the year where you'll want to have a good spread out. Really let the fish talk to you. You're going to want to put some flies, some spoons, some meat rigs. You're going to want to have it all down there because you really don't know on a day-to-day -day basis what the fish are going to be going on. So, but anyway, Manistee, Michigan, 140 to 200 from the from Big Point all the way to Onekama has got productive lake trout fishing going on right now. So south of the harbor and north of the harbor is really firing good. Now, if you're looking for inland lake fishing, a real good opportunity is bass fishing on Portage Lake. You know, Portage Lake is connected to the big lake, has a really good influx of smallmouth bass always. And I know that Portage is going right now. I talked to a buddy of mine who said he had some really good success on mixed bag, smallmouth and largemouth out by the channel and also in the way east side of the lake where the water is up, of course, right now in Portage. So those shallow weeds are not shallow anymore. They got some good water over top of them and pitching swim baits on the east side of the lake has been very productive as well. So check out the big water, check out Portage Lake, but no matter what you do, get on up to Manistee County and check out the grape fishing. Are you in the market for a new trailer? For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127, north of St. John's. You know, just a couple days ago, I spent an awesome day on the water with Captain Eric Long and his brother Dave from Long Line Sport Fishing out there in Lake St. Clair, and we had a great time. We caught all kinds of fish. We had a triple limit of some super nice walleyes. So if you're thinking of walleye fishing, don't set Lake St. Clair off too quick. You know, just because the river bite is starting to go away, that Lake St. Clair bite from the mouth of the Detroit River all the way up to St. Clair Shores has been really stable and consistent. Now, we know you can't go to Canada, and that's kind of knocking down the musky fishing, but I'm telling you what, we had an awesome day of mixed bag fishing. So how were we doing it? We were trolling our bandits, basically uh, 60 to, 20 foot to 60 foot back on our offshore trolling boards. It was a real simple program, is just let your bandits out 20, 30, 40, 50 on one side, 30, 40, 50, 60 on the other side, and you've got all the depths covered perfectly. You're gonna troll, oh, you know, two, two miles an hour is a good benchmark speed. That's what we were going, you know, and remember if you're trolling into that current, there's a little half mile an hour current out there. Uh, coming out of the Detroit River into St. Clair. So when you're headed at Detroit River, you might want to have that speed over ground, say about 2.5 because of that half mile an hour current. But either way, there's good walleye, good smallmouth bass, and as soon as that water dirties up with a blow, we're going to have muskies as well. Hey, are you in the market for a small outdoor shed? carport or small storage building, visit my friends up at Midwest Steel Carports. They'll travel anywhere in the Lower Peninsula to install your shed or carport for you. Visit them online at MidwestSteelCarports.com. Hey, you know what? <clears throat> the greater Cadillac region right now is firing on all cylinders. Talk to Chris and Steve from over at Pilgrim's Village. And hey, if you're looking for a great place to stay, call Chris or Steve. Get booked into the resort. You're right there on the shore of Mitchell Lake. But there's, there's basically everything biting, according to Chris. Good gills are biting on the secondary breaks. So they're, they're done bedding and they're pushed off. Now you're going to find those gills basically from 6 to 12 feet of water, not up in the shallows that much anymore. 
And if you're looking for crappies, same thing. They're gonna push off to the secondary uh, uh, breaks in the deeper weeds. Now, if you're crappie fishing, make sure you stop at Pilgrim's Village, get yourself a bucket of fat heads or crappie minnows because you really need minnows to catch the crappie past the early season. They kinda, they're, they're not quite as aggressive, so you need live bait under slip bobbers to get them. But the bluegills, of course, it's just a worm bite. If you're looking for something unique, you ought to get your boat. If you're a troller, get your boat over to Mitchell and Cadillac and start plying the brakes between 10 and 20 feet for walleye. You know, this is the best walleye bite Chris said he's seen in 15 years on Cadillac and Mitchell. And everybody expects it to just keep ending, but to be honest, it hasn't ended. Uh, it's still going, especially if you like to evening fish or early morning fish. You can get out there 6 a.m. right at the crack of dawn and fish for two, three hours and have some decent success trolling crankbaits. Now crankbaits are totally preferential. I wouldn't troll bandits and big stuff. I'd stick with the number seven flicker shads or number nine or 11 flicker minnows. Those seem to be really good producers on Cadillac and Mitchell. So again, walleye going on. Now if you're a bass fisherman, as you know, they got bass tournaments throughout the whole year there at Mitchell and Cadillac. So maybe call Steve or Chris and find out if you don't want to fight with a bass tournament, you might want to find out where they are, when and where they are. But bass fishing has been awesome all, all early season here. Lots of reports of not only good numbers of fish, but good size of fish as well. So the greater Cadillac region all the way up to uh, Lake City, because uh, Lake City has been producing some really nice fish too on Misaki. So same thing, uh, a mixed bag of bass, panfish, and, and uh, an occasional walleye at Misaki as well. So get on up to the Cadillac region, hook your boat up. It's time to forget the coronavirus and COVID. It's time to take, take some time with the family and get out there and enjoy the safest place you can be. And where is that? In a boat with your family in Michigan's North Country. We'll see you there. Hey, another five great reports. We really appreciate all of our reporters for sending us this information and keep you, the listener, informed on where you can go and what new opportunities you can experience. As always, our whole report is based on guides. If you're looking to get out and you maybe don't want to get your boat out or maybe you want to go to a body of water that you're unfamiliar with, get a hold of one of the guides. Click on any one of the destinations and right there in the fishing report area, if we have a guide partner to suggest to you, it'll be right there. You can click on their banner. It'll take you right to their website. But we'll see you again next week here on the Fisherman's Digest Hot Bites.